tribute with a hover over. I don't think he's gonna be locking that one in. Communication going through the team. Jax, the Jax Morgana lock in. Wow. Those are two really high priority Cloud9 picks. I really like the scouting curses done here. In Champion Select, Cloud9 is a team that generally just works off of, you know, best top laner, Jax, best support, Morgana, best uh, jungler, Elise, best mid laner, Lulu. They picked the Lulu out of this one. But then I feel like Curse took two of their other primary picks. That really puts Cloud9 in the tough spot. I think they take Elise here to prevent another one of their top picks right. being taken against them. And then I'm not sure what else. Cloud9 usually a team. They're usually really fast here. Yeah. Yeah. Medio is, doesn't know if he wants the jungler or not. Dominate could play well on Kha'Zix as well, but it's the Medio. Ooh. The Elise actually goes right through for that. And Sneaky again picks up Corky. Well, there were the 280 carry bands. Yeah. yeah Lucian true. and Twitch were both banned away, so the Corky is a fairly logical choice for Sneaky. Urgot chance coming out. Highly unlikely, <laughs> I'd have to say. <laughs> Yellow Pete did play an Urgot game in the spring split. Especially with the many patches ago, Urgot's lock on range for his Q was reduced. So I feel like he's actually fairly unpickable against champions with dashes, because as soon as you get the lock on, Corky would Valkyrie away, and there would be no more. So, very unlikely. Wow. The Thresh is banned out and the Jinx is locked in. Thresh is like the safety net for a Jinx pick. This is interesting for Cop here. Yeah, I think, I, I think Curse is probably uh, banking on the fact that the Jax is enough of a frontline distraction. Mm -hmm. that they don't necessarily need as much protection for the Jinx in the back Black line. Shield. And as soon as they pick the Jinx, Whoa. Cloud9 picks some heavy divers. That is awesome what they just did. Whoa. Big mind game. Bringing it back. So that means support Lulu. Mid lane Kazix, yeah, and top lane Shivana. So they're flipping the tables right there on Curse. Guy's got a smile on his face. Cloud9 definitely had something worked up for today, and they thought if Curse was going to be a bit of a hard go on the Rift, they're going to give him something to think about in Champion Select. Now, it's special to pick out here. We're looking for what Boy Boy can round out the mid lane with. Yeah, now that he knows what he's up against. What does he want to pick against Kha'Zix? When's the last time he played against Kha'Zix? This is what players yeah. can be thrown off lane. with. Right. He's been pretty much only a jungler pick ever since the changes to his ultimate evolution. Mm -hmm. Giving him higher gank strength. Does he go for the lane domination and range advantage with Boy, boy. Really fast fingers on that Syndra. Just the generalist. Oriana needs to provide a little bit of defense for Jinx. I think that's the smarter choice. Sticks with the orbs. Yeah. <laughs> At least one this time. Needs a little bit of support for Cop. I think that's smart considering Cloud9 really up their dive potential with those last few picks. Really interesting. Pick and ban phase here. Cloud9 took longer than usual and then actually threw a curveball. They very rarely throw curveballs in champion select. They're usually very brute force about the way they select their champions. Have to see if High's playstyle changes coming into this game. Usually very relaxed in the mid lane, not too worried about his farm, not too worried about much. He just yeah. is for the rest of the team. But now on Kha'Zix, you can't just be is. You're going to be forced into your turret. Things could hurt. He pretty much wants to be a big roamer. He wants to not lose to Void Boy yeah. early on more than anything else. And I want to see how aggressive he gets early because the old high Kha'Zix uh, would ignite pretty much right away, try and all in you at level two. I wonder if Void Boy remembers those times and if he's prepared to stop it. All right, before the game gets underway, let's check your predictions for the last game here on Saturday. According to lolesports.com, that's 84% of you that are thinking Cloud9 is going to win this one. Well, not much curse faith coming in. If you begin to doubt your pick, <laughs> update your vote by tweeting at lolesports. Use either the hashtag C9win or CRSwin, depending on who you want to vote for. And we will check on that throughout the game, especially if it changes a lot. That is true. That makes it more... Interesting. And more than not, they get very, very close, especially yeah. in game three. You see Complexity being cloud nine, and then everybody's like, oh, I should probably vote for Complexity. They're winning. It'll change, and you guys are going to be the ones to change it. So make sure you get your social medias out. We're about to get into the game. Cloud nine versus Curse, which, as we're saying, Curse could tie up against cloud nine with this yeah. one. Every game today allows the team to tie the team that they are playing against. And it's a really interesting stat yeah. right there. Could Curse tie themselves for fourth or fifth place? Yeah. You know, get 
two great teams here with Cloud9 and Curse at two and three if they end up winning this. Because honestly, if Curse beats Cloud9 here, they kind of enter the conversation for elite team in North America. Right. Absolutely, they do. Let's see how much pressure they can put on in the early game. We know of Curse to do a few tricky things in the early game. Last split, they were the one to set up a line of scrimmage. It seems like everybody's taking after No Name now. You gotta throw a cue at your mid laner as you yeah. walk out of base. Let them know where you are. <laughs> Most important thing. The slow Welcome move in. This looks familiar. Lane. Cop in the mid lane. Yeah. Curse had this most games. Yeah. Waltzing around. Cop getting the stutter step on. Actually, really interesting mid lane item choices. Ooh. Yeah. Highs with the long sword. And boy, boy, going cloth armor. So he's really preparing himself against a little bit of early game aggression from high. It's also good gank defense because if anyone comes ganking with Lee Sin, it's all magic damage. There used to be a person in that brush. Yes. <laughs> Not anymore. Nice war kill as well. There it is. Curse through in the early game. That brush has been missed quite a few times. They find a way to get the ward in on that one. And good pressure. Looks like they're going to full control here. And they're not going to let too much happen, knowing that probably a ward is going over on their side. They keep it safe in five. I like Curse. that one. Now they yep. know the matchup. Well, they're, they're hoping to know the matchup. The yeah. interesting thing is if <laughs> Curse doesn't come through off. the lane, they would, they would dodge that ward. Very good ward control over the blue buff. By Curse. Will they get a collision as well? A little bit of vision there on the Glitter Lance. They also have the ward in, so they're safe from the triple, the trifecta of damage there from Cloud9. It looks like we will go to laning phase and not get the equal matchups, unfortunately. Always yep. fun to see. But now it's up to Cop and Sneaky, who can really make themselves bigger as the jungler has a hand in how the lanes work. And a complete share by I Will Dominate and Quas there, whereas Cloud9 is deciding to do more soloistic jungle styles. Mm -hmm. We should probably show, still share a little bit of experience, uh, but it's just a question of how much, how much they actually want to share these things. Uh, doing a buff trade as well, which is to be expected when you have your solo AD carry in the bottom lane. I wonder how that pays off in the end. Because no, we've never yeah. really seen the junglers meet two v two. They're always either one with a Shivana and going one one, or you got your Eve and something else. Yeah. Or you're at least something else, and you're going too. But the big thing about this is, if it was a 2v2 fight, it wouldn't be a 2v2 fight for long. Yeah, Because Close in. they always keep their, their invade buff in the lane where they have the two people, and the other team typically has zero. So it would very quickly turn into a 4v2, which is why they end up getting these uncontested trades. And easily down and out. Dominate Quas, make it back to the safe side of the jungle. You see 16 to 8 in the mid lane. Boy, boy, working that clockwork windup. Auto attack passive as well to keep high on the on the back heel. I wonder if Cloud Nine's going to continue to do this double jungle strategy, or if they actually try and morph this into a an old four v o push. It doesn't look like it. They're going for an extremely early dragon. Wow. They're going to have to tank that dragon damage fairly adequately. And Curse with that ward might actually oh, collapse man. here. Cloud9 oh, in a man. lot of danger. Oh me, oh my, oh Lemon Nation, the empowered strike, the auto attack. Wait a minute though, they could get themselves into a sticky situation. This is a lot of Cloud9 going hard. The flash in, does he have it? Gets the red buff proc onto Boy Boy. That's no more mana, that's no flash. That's a dead Boy Boy. Oh. Dominate with a few more, he hits it. The burn, the kill for high, the rebuff. What a disaster for a curse, and much like the team that has the 80 carry on support of the side of the buff invade has an advantage if there's a fight, Cloud9 has this advantage because they have more collapsibility here. So many flashes burn just to finish off Lemon Nation, forgetting that they're completely outnumbered. Quas and Boy Boy have no flashes for the escape here, so once Meteos gets in range with the red buff, there is no escape. Dominate sticks around because he thinks he can fight after it. High has it ignite as well after landing that W, and they just clean. The cursed team, the dragon, was actually a bait, which is so unexpected, three minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Cloud9 making moves right out of the gate, and that gives them only a 700 gold lead, but the amount that they must have shaken up curse from that one is gonna pay off even more. High now with double bust in the mid lane, got that off of Dominate. He's gonna be having fun against Boy Boy. Yeah, that is exactly 
what Void Boy wanted to avoid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The earliest possible Tiamat or Ravenous Hydra for high is going to happen with that 102 open. And also now Ward Control can go into the hands of Cloud9. See if we can get balls to the top lane now. Hopefully he can start soaking up experience. Quas at 5 CS. He's trying to do they're the They're doing same. this thing again where Cop is a solo laner mm -hmm. and they're trying to support X Special uh, with Quas. So at the moment Cop has the big level advantage, he will be fine in that solo lane. But it is very interesting how they're decoupling their support and AD carry so much. Adios getting good board clear it's out. They know the pink is there, so they could go back to hit it. Already two sweepers here for Cloud9, and they're going to make sure they get a little bit of use out of those right away. Medio's kind of hatching that one, has no chance to clear it. But he's safe. High is right there if he needs them. They're moving as a team. They need it. Yeah, high more so than other mid laners in the LCS will swap to sweeper, usually on his first back. I actually noticed Link doing it in his game as well. The time yeah, spent on Cloud9 five or something. changed his view on the game a little bit. <laughs> the danger of allowing the enemy into your home turf. Cloud9 getting their intel stolen by Link yeah. a little bit. Still an effective strategy for those guys, though. That Double red buffs. and blue buff. Yep. Coming up big, Void Boy is feeling the pain in the mid lane, but with his kill, still doing all right. He's keeping his CS up against Ty, who usually is farther down in CS, just due to the way he plays. See, special back to Ward. They're keeping it clear. So pressure to the mid lane, possibly, or pressure off of the mid lane, Curse is trying to do. Yeah, and the lane is actually in, the, in a perfect spot in mid lane for Void Boy. High is having just a little bit shoved, uh, and Void Boy is completely safe from pretty much everything. Elise Sin Gank at that point, uh, we pretty much pulled the least into the turret, so Void Boy can completely safely farm as long as it keeps the lane there. Uh, but the minions actually stacked in if high plays this smart, it's going to go into the danger territory. Actually, high evolved his Q, yeah. which hasn't been done for a while. If he isolates Void Boy at any point, it's going to be a lot of damage. I think I'm a little farther. Void Boy's got some distance to work with thanks to that last upgrade update for him. But high, like you said, aggressive ignite. Just about back up. That could be a possibility. Level 6 is there for Void Boy. Meteos is going to be grabbing red, so his gank potential rising just a little bit. And he'll probably be right in the back pocket of high as well. In just a few moments as the bottom lane returns. And as Cloud9 continues throughout this LCS season, Balls gets a call out. There's a little fans the out there, yeah. We need to track the improvement of high and how that relates to Cloud9 as a whole. He is such an integral part of their mm -hmm. team. His ability to, you know, feel good and execute his calls as much as he comes back from injury. He actually tweeted that he can sleep on his side now. He couldn't right. do that last week. So he's actually much more rested coming back off that collapsed lung. Yeah, it's a con it's still it's there. It's a real, in like, it's a very legitimate injury. Absolutely. It, he looks good. You look see him on the camera, it yep. doesn't look like much. But there's strain in the game, and it does affect you. You're battling that as well as a team that wants to just crush you down. This will be quite helpful. He'll pick this back up. Actually, that'll just go to Meteos with safety from the rest of the lanes. And Cloud9 is starting to encroach a little bit. Curse is losing ground. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to start seeing the turret pushes now coming out from Cloud9 since they have incurred that small advantage already. And knowing that the damage reduction from turrets is now expired, being that we are 8 minutes 40 seconds in the game. Boy, boy, trying to fast push those lanes with dissonance. Usually it's just a quick EQ or QE back and forth. Wasting out that mana. He will back. Seeker's arm guard first for him, seeing all this damage come in. AD heavy. Going on to Quas, the level six. Counter Strike is up. The fans may not be too happy with that trade. Well, double Dorian's early on for balls. Siobhan is not mm. the matchup you want to pick into Jax typically. You want Siobhan to be able to either stack armor or get a lead on Jax, otherwise, it's very difficult for Siobhan to be successful. And knowing that Quas had the support so early in the game. It's a tough matchup, but Balls is holding his own thus far. It's a good fight, round after round. It's a it's pretty much even trade. A little bit of healing coming in from whatever they're running, especially those Dorans. Another bottom lane, the turret almost down. Our first one to go down, just a few more shots. Curse is going to try to stave that off for a little bit, but right now, 81 to 75. Everybody's quite matched up across the board. Just that 1,000 gold lead from a few kills and the Dargon. Yeah, even the levels. Level 7, 80 carries, and level 5 supports on both sides. Mm -hmm. BF Swords as well, just that long sword on Sneaky giving him a slight edge. And it, just that, a slight edge for Cloud9 in this match. The question will be, can they transition that slight edge into a resounding victory like they usually did last split 
Or will it be more like their game against Complexity, where they're just out of sorts and lackadaisical the whole game? It seems like the point high being out has affected the most is reacting. Cloud9 seems like they can do things, but once, like you said, once they're kind of on the back foot without high being there recently is a little chaotic. Yeah, Meteos even, clearing out wards. Even getting on the back foot in the first place. Right. A lot of the early early skirmishes the team has, there's just a shred of uncertainty or just bad decisions. Mm -hmm. That's something Meteos used to you know, announce, and he would say, I will not gank unless it feels 90% like it's going to work. Yeah. And the gank against Complexity was a triple kill for Robert X. Lee, and it looked like there was hesitation. So you can even see Meteos kind of faltered on his own beliefs on how to gank, but not anymore. Cloud9 seems to have rounded those off, at least within and between week one and two. So we'll see how they fare for the rest of this week. Coming up on 11 minutes, Cloud9 so far holding every lane pretty much to their control. They might be looking for some sneaky moves right here too. Look at the heavy ward control they have. Right in Curse's blue buff area, trying to snatch a view of EVE and get some nice work control so Cloud9 can push up very aggressively and secure this turret. Yeah, push up aggressively is the word and what they're looking for. Hydra being built up by high as this turret goes down. He's gonna be pushing mid lane as well with that Hydra clear. We'll see what Cloud9 can do. Like you said, a lot of wards onto the Dragon Pit, so that burst of damage that they just got in the inventory will be Ooh, that well, much more helpful. They do not know of this ward. The ward also doesn't exactly see the dragon because it's tucked so <laughs> far in the corner that its, its vision is actually cut off a little bit. Uh, also, Curse just doesn't have enough control of the map to contest this, right. even if they know it's happening. Quas' teleport was used to get back to the top lane. Ball's actually still had his 74 to 65 there with three assists to the half dragon. Getting love from the crowd. Keeping his dragon's descent on. We'll see if he gets any love because we see Meteos on the wing, but so is Dominate. Well, we usually see Meteos on the wing, but it's high today. He's snuck oh, yeah, on you're right. right there. Meteos, though, in the bottom lane. Very nicely done. Cop has no idea what happened. They cuff him and put him down. Yeah, Meteos, the unseen threat from Lee Sin this time. Big move <laughs> to kick back Cop, and that's Cop without his support. Uh, all too familiar playing his own game oftentimes, and he gets caught out. Zero, they can keep going. A good push in the bottom lane. They can stay there. Sneaky has a pink ward, but in the top oh. lane, we're looking at Balls now. Dragon's Descent to get out. Dominant used his burst of speed already, but Balls has cleared the distance he needs to and gets the safety. Yeah, eats the gank there from I Will Dominate. Burns the ultimate. And they might lose the turret here. Depends how well High can support this. Dominate, be careful with that pink ward. Uh -oh. That does a lot of damage. One for one hit. Oh no, he walks oh, by because he wants the kill. They are scared of the high right now. They know they're a little bit low. Shots on. Oh my god, he got Woo! the jump before he gets in the brush. He was hoping for at least a landing. Quas was, but it's all done in midair. Looking good. It's one of the best things about rushing a Ravenous Hydra on Kha'Zix is people want to stand together to avoid the isolation <laughs> damage, but they don't want to stand together because they'll no, take no, AoE from the Hydra. From uh, because Quas was isolated there, the Q basically just ate him alive, and it gives High a nice roam kill, 2-0-2. Two, two. That was a great job. A lot of time was put into that by Curse as well. So For no reward. Right, no reward at all, and the turret going down. So they lose pressure in the top lane. Balls gets to stay there. Quas can teleport back, but he's not even going to have to. The minion wave is coming to him as Cloud9 gets much more on the map. Yeah, they want this blue buff as well because they still maintain that strong ward presence oh. in the Curse blue buff. Oh, hey. Uh oh, the smite can make he's it in. good. Safeguard out. Wow, what a bro! He just Valkyries away from him. Yeah, <laughs> no safeguard for you, friend. We blew I have buff. minions to farm. Yep, all the minions going into double lift mode. So he'll keep himself good in the bottom lane. Like you said, once this happens, the AD carries are always kind of sitting low on items until they finally decide to back because they're not seeing any any pressure. Yeah, it's very much a AD carries get the farm. They become the main damage dealers for these teams because there's essentially three roamers, a mid laner and an AD carry. And also a dragon. And also a dragon. They just walk right away from the red buff after rewarding it. It said mid, a little more important. Got enough wards on the top side that we may be able to close in on a fight. Ball's safe in the top lane. Ninjatabi on the health. He's looking to actually just be brute force in this. With high in the mid lane, he's like, high build damage. I'll go tank Siobhan on this game. Yeah, it's looking like... Just get people a little bit low. Yep. 
There are a lot of damage that can come out from Sneaky. Just the AoE spam from Corky. Kind of balance out having a physical damage mid laner, a fairly physical damage top laner. Is the magic damage that Corky provides. Means the other team can't just stack armor and be safe. Right. 5,000 gold. What was the vote at the start of this game? Was something like 86%? 84, 16. Yeah. It's looking that way. Yeah. Right now for Cloud9. Maybe even more so. Cloud9 with the 5,000 gold lead 50 minutes into the game. They don't give up leads like that, typically. <laughs> even though Curse did have some nice comeback attempts in Super Week. They would often be fighting from behind, but then find a couple fights in the mid-game that so really work true. their side. Always getting a few wins. 2,000, 3,000 gold down. Doesn't matter. They find what they need. Right now, it's looking tough, though. Void Boy has not been having one of his best games. He is up in farm, but he's almost forced to piece together items to keep going what he needs to do. Yeah. Didn't finish the, the Zanias, too much money, but going for that at the end as well. Yeah, sitting on the Seekers the because that's his main defense against the Cavic's yeah. physical damage. But he still wants to hit his core items because he needs to become Orianna. So the dreadful part about laning Orianna against physical damage people is it delays your item build. You have to fit in that Seekers. That's so scary. Hi just did it a few seconds ago and Sneaky just did it. They're coming out of the woodwork of Curse's side of the jungle and Curse can't even throw anything at him. Just means how much Cloud9 has control over this map. Red and the blue buff is Dominate Toys with trying to get some of his own jungle. Yeah. Oh, they're just going. Oh my word, they jump right in onto a ball save coming in from Boy Boy. They don't really have too much vision. No, they have a pink ward in the brush, actually. So they see everything that's happening. C9 does not know this. Does not look like that Jinx rocket had enough time to get extra damage. Boy Boy, in the kill yeah. there. I Very mean, nicely done. Curse went a little bit deep at the end there. Boy Boy landed a nice shock wave to keep them at bay. They couldn't quite finish off Dominate, and maybe this would be a cursed team fight. They did only get one at the cost of a turret, so overall, Cloud9 still comes out advantageously, but High walks through a ward, and he's sitting at a very low number of health. Don't need to do this. These guys, oh my word, you could do that. I was gonna say, these guys are getting greedy, but the kills are literally walking in front of them right now. Special, and boy boy, very low. High does decide to stay. Looks like they're going to keep themselves going in the mid lane. Good dodge out, and Cloud9 with four turrets up pretty much can walk on the map however they want. Or down, I yeah. should say. Up or down. They are they up. Have vision control. For the turrets that are down. You can see High actually life stealing a whole bunch after being low. The benefit of having that Ravenous Hydra, the wave clear, he'll be taking a lot of the free lane farm. That's what used to happen when Soul Lane Kazakh was more of a thing, is he would just go around the map clearing waves incredibly quickly and then would be that roaming assassination threat. No vision control whatsoever by Curse. Meaning this dragon is crazy. uncontestable. Completely. Hashtag all fog coming in for Curse. And even farming his own mid lane, he has to be very careful. High does not decide to jump in on the dissonance speed. Curse is, they're actually quite split. Backing in weird spots. Cop trying to farm by himself still. A little of all sorts here as Curse tries to regain some ground. Yeah, it's looking very grim for Curse right here. They're pretty much just hoping that Cloud9 makes a mistake at some point. But Cloud9, aside from that one little bit of an overdive, has played rather solid throughout this. And it's going to be a tricky start to the season for Curse here. Having played the top five teams in the LCS in their first five games, their schedule will get easier. Their record will probably bounce back a little bit. Right. They're going to be... I hate to say it, like that fourth place team, once it all evens out, it seems yeah. like, and they played everyone once. Uh, but for now, it's got to be tough on their minds. Having to deal with so many tough teams right off the bat and taking some lumps. And it doesn't seem like the way things are playing out right now. It almost seems like you want to see, wow, you want to see yeah. what Cop and Expecial can put up against the 2v2. But since it's always well, swapped, you don't... don't first off, they up. have to lane together. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. absolutely. Oh, nice pull into the brush here, but they probably have to fall back. Curses. Two collapses. Who got that? I think it was Sneaky. I don't know. Was Whoever it? got it, it was hey. indeed Sneaky. Yeah. Yeah. Good Double good point to him. 94% to Cloud9. Sneaky yeah. steals another blue. Meteos has stolen a couple. Sneaky stolen a couple. Far and away ahead on items now. Elimination thrown in the favorite. Mikhail's Crucible already. He's also got cooldowns to spit out the shields, the slow, the continuous fight. I mean, the entire Cloud9 team pretty much continues to catch up to you if you're fighting them. Wonder if the camera shoots to balls for like half a second, you get half of a balls chant. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Apparently, what happens? 
Just a quick one. So the red buff being taken away, draining all resources that they can, yeah. while leaving up the annoyance of a little bit. Curse has lost control. Yeah. Starved out. He's not even on the screen. <laughs> 20 minutes into this one. A lot of fast games today. The teams came in with the notebooks out, knowing what they wanted to do. The man of the hour, apparently, going head-to-head -head now with Quas, level 12s, as they both take a bite out of crime on that one. Well, the Sunfire Cape and the Ninja Tabi make him a formidable foe right there for Quas. But this is all allowing Cloud9 to set up vision control. Nice scout there by X-Special. He's going to know if people are there based on his passive uh, item activating to see if it hits. Sneaky little tormented soil scout. Yep. Also, all these rockets coming over from Sneaky himself doing a good bit of damage. Doesn't have too much damage built up. Just the Blade, or Blade of the Room King, yeah. The Bloodthirster that he's stacking up for now, but it's still the big bombs are impacting these fights. Wow. Sneaky's sitting on 2,700 gold, actually. <laughs> That's the whole not going yeah. back thing. Just always these 80 carries far better right now are crazy. Should be a turret here coming here for Cloud9. Dark Binding just missing with a nice sidestep from Sneaky. Taking a few shots. Not able to get the turret down just yet. But you can see Curse. There's no definitive way. They don't want to throw the yeah. ball onto somebody. Quas isn't going to come in and give them that delivery and gauge that they have because it'll be a wipeout. Exactly. And if Dominate could somehow flank through the jungle, he doesn't know when he's going to walk through a pink ward. I mean, look at all the wards that Cloud9 has up. Yeah. It's very difficult to flank around. Oh! Can nearly assassinate. If he would have popped his Ignite, Special would have died. Magical shield for attack damage. You can see the results. Not too good. 36.5 to 29.3. Five turrets, so the inhibitor yeah, turrets look at still that. stand. But. Look at the vision control yeah. that they have. They can easily just be on Baron right now. You can't see the particles if you're on Chris's side. That's mainly a, that's only a spectator thing. Yep. So right now, Chris is worried about walking into their jungle. They scouted the brush with the tri with the oh, pink ward in there. Maybe they could flash oh in the last second. The timing actually works out. Oh man, that was close. That was very close. And with the oh, never mind. There's a second delivery there. At least he kept them in line for a second. They go one for one, but the Baron. Cloud9 is just putting themselves on top of this game. Yeah, ball still 0 0 3 apparently. 9,000 gold lead. And Quas trying to get that bottom turret all the while, but this is completely in Curse's side. Dominate. That was close. It's worth a try, quite honestly. At this point, absolutely. And then they've gotten quite low because Cloud9 had such paramount vision control there. A little bit risky, but overall, I think a smart call by Cloud9 to go for that. And, Cloud and high falling is not a bad thing. It gets even harder and harder now that Cloud9 with Baron. If it's, the game is so low in time that even if Curse gets the fight they want and can get kills, it's only about 28 to 30 seconds that Cloud9's off the map. Curse won't be able to gain much at all. Yeah, and it's five turrets to two. Right. If Curse even wins the fight because it's most likely going to be on their own doorstep, yeah, it's right going to be place. so long until they can turn the minion wave around that Cloud9's most likely going to be respawned at that point. Cloud9 can actually play extremely aggressive and even a little bit reckless right now because they built up such a lead. I'd say Voidboy getting this Sonya's fixed up is going to be very helpful, but especially really other people, Dominate, have been the focus of High coming in and almost zeroing them out. So Voidboy is really just there to give himself a little safety with that Sonya's hopefully a play to be made coming up here for Curse. Like you said, it could be in front of the base with that Morgana Soul Shackle in the tight spot. It's really all they have left to get yeah. a fight going. Curse has, like you said, very few options. Even if Quas could get a nice stun on people, it's just it's just not there. Right. They have the Mikhail's heal from Lemonation, uh, rank two of his ultimate, another dragon easily being taken by Cloud9. Slow and steady actually winning the race here for, Cur for Cloud9. If they're trying to regain their composure and consistency, they seem to lose a little bit during Super Week. That'll help, give them something to do. Solo lanes are one level up, 14s to 13s on the tops and mid. That just gives Cloud9 the better chance in these fights, stat-wise, and just really being in position for them. 43 to 33, so we got a 10,000 gold lead. Cloud9 can make it more, and they have before. Still, with the wards on the map, we do see that Curse is getting a few more wards out, but like we said, they can't even use them yet. Yeah, they're only getting the wards extremely close to their own base. The yeah. three supers of Cloud9 don't necessarily need to take those down because the only thing those wards are defending is, hey, which inhibitor turret are they going to be attacking next? Ooh. And even, you know, that brush doesn't really give Curse many <laughs> catch options. 
A lot of shields, safety, jumps, gap closers that Cloud9 can use if they do get into a sticky situation. Top turret going down in the split push, and this is really going to start to spread curse thin. That's what they can't afford. Yeah, I think we might be seeing it dive fairly shortly. There's armor getting stacked up on Meteos and Balls. We know that I can actually jump in and pretty much one-shot someone. Got to be careful with my language. Uh-oh. Oh, he's going in on Quas. There he is. He's going deep. It looks like the wild growth is on. It's going to be a few more bites. Chop, chop. There it is. Quas goes down. First it's kill of the, the game split. for Balls. 1-0-3. And here's the dive. Going in. One more shot. Sneaky's got to try to dodge a minion playing body block to his missiles. He's in a bad situation right now, but the Baron buff is keeping everybody nice and healthy. It's going on to the turrets as well. The inhibitor's going to be going down as Balls flaps his wings to get that one to go down. Yeah. Curse's base is just getting erased right now. They're losing inhibitors and turrets. Everything going down. Ball's taking out that inhibitor. Just breathes fire and void boy says, get away from me. This is mine. 26 minutes, eight to three, and eight to two in turrets. Curse's base is in shambles. Yeah, this has been a completely dominating affair by Cloud9. They had that slight lead in the early game uh, based off that very early dragon fight, and they have just never relented off of Curse. This is a game where, unlike the games in Super Week, Curse wasn't able to find any windows. Yeah. They haven't made this a close game. They haven't been able to contest their buffs. And they have slowly just given up all their gold and right. all their resources directly to Cloud9. Yeah, so this can. fight was on the other side while Balls was killing Jax. Meteos jumps all the way in with high. And because he's the tanky one, he can tank the turret for a while. And a Ooh. sneaky little jump out during the shockwave from high. Something they've been looking he's back. for all He's game. playing great on yeah. this game. He put his time in. There was a little bit of falter there when High came back, and even he knew it. Meteos talked about it a little bit as well in some of the interviews, but these guys look to be very much back in form, and they're all doing stuff on their own, too. Not waiting for the initiation, oh, wow. knowing limitations. Uh, death cap was completed on Lemonation as well. So, Good AP Lord. Sport Lulu. Actually, channeling some of that mid Lulu power with the fantastic shield ratios, actually, is the main thing to make the assassins even more unkillable. Cloud9 making their way in. They got one last inhibitor turret. We have Quas in the bottom lane, but it looks like they're making a, a ring around the Rosie. Yeah, they got they're two inhibitors down. Side. So they're coming in from the side where the inhibitors are. Gonna get this third inhibitor down. Curse, you either have to fight this or basically just surrender the game. At this point, Curse doesn't want to fight it because they know they're going to lose the fight at that point. It's a tough situation to be in. Absolute go for broke situation here. Ball placement, High gets in, not too much damage. It's special, the first one to get hit up. Soul Shackle trying to be used. Balls gets locked up there. The Rocket only hitting him in the front line. Grandmaster is on for Quas. They hold it off, but only to lose their inhibitor. Cloud9 yeah, is looking so for the win. They're so low, and there's so many super minions here. They're low, and they don't really have time to heal. Oh, that Goes was down. a shot. He made it. It followed through the flash. The Nexus turret will fall. Another 28-minute game coming in for week two. Saturday showing and proving to be an awesome day of League of Legends games. Cloud9 eyes on the Nexus. 28-20 on the clock as they take down Curse. A lot of fast games, and Cloud9 returns to form with a very quick 28-minute, 28-second victory there, destroying Curse. <laughs> with the balls chant of his I own. With the balls chant of his own. Getting a lot of love that game. The fans coming out for Cloud9 here in the last game. Curse, as they have said before, when things happen like that, they fall into the, can we do this? No, let's not. Can we yeah. do this? No, let's not. It's not that they get quiet. It's just they don't pull the trigger. Yeah. It's always tough to criticize teams to lo for losing to Cloud9 because Cloud9 right. has historically dominated the North American scene. But for Curse, <laughs> the reason they bring on X Special is because last split, they were lackadaisical in their calls when they fall behind. They wanted the decisive person to come in there and let them do stuff. It didn't happen this game. It looked like the old curse. Once they fell behind, yeah. they were not making any moves. Comp was laning on his own. X Special, if there were calls, I don't really know where they were because they weren't making moves. They were just giving up every single red and blue buff to Cloud9. And eventually the lead was too great to overcome. One thing I 